Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you, and happy belated Thanksgiving. But every day is a day of Thanksgiving, isn't it? it every day is a day of Thanksgiving, isn't it? Oh, boy, glory to God. I thought there was something wrong with the microphone. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So glad to be back in Audubon this morning, my daughter and my granddaughter, but it's good to be home. It is good to be home. Let me read some announcements to you, some announcements I would like to emphasize for this morning. And uh, choir rehearsal is this week, and we will rehearse every week during the Advent season. So isn't that exciting, choir? Yes, amen. We're anticipating that and looking forward to the great music that Chris will be bringing to our hearts and to our ears. Amen. A um, Christmas tree. So this is my first decorating the tree with you guys, so I'm looking forward to that wonderful experience. The more who, the more who stays around, the quicker we can get it done. Yeah, that's awesome, isn't it? Um, this past Thursday, this past week, I should say, on Wednesday, there was a Thanksgiving dinner, and to my understanding, it was a whopping success. Let's give God a hand. Let's praise God for that. Praise God. And uh, over 400 meals were distributed. That is absolutely awesome. And so you still can make a contribution towards that event if you so desire. If the Lord places that, I'm on the screen the screen, but uh, Deb says be here no later than 1030 on December 4th, and uh, so that you guys can go and deliver those bags. We give God the glory for that. Also, we will be taking another order for the gift cards on Sunday, December the 3rd, so as you prepare for our Christmas gifts and what have you, we will be able to uh, accommodate you for that. So we're looking forward to a huge order from people happy. So that's please drop that off for Toys for Tots. That is all the announcements. Anyone have any other announcements they would like to share at this time? If not, let us prepare for our morning service. And we're going to have music by our Audubon praise team. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh, the 
Jesus, blessed Savior, blessed Savior, he's worthy to a strong, a strong deliverer. In him I will always strong. Glory, glory in all things. Give him glory, Jesus. Blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Oh, God bless. He's worthy to be praised. Will you stand if you're able and join me for the centering for worship? Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Come into God's presence with singing. Give thanks to the Lord. Bless God's holy name. For God's steadfast love is present now and endures forever. Will you join me in unison with our four affirmation of faith? We affirm that our faith is not passive, but active, expressed through love, compassion, and tangible acts of kindness towards the marginalized and vulnerable. In serving others, we believe that we are serving Christ himself. Therefore, we are committed to seeking justice showing mercy, and walking humbly with our God. We acknowledge that our faith is incomplete without deeds of love and mercy. We choose to be vessels of God's love, bringing hope to the hopeless and comfort to the heartbroken. Exalted, the King is exalted on high, and I will praise His name. He is the Lord, forever is true, shall reign, heaven and earth rejoice in His home. The king is exalted on high. He is exalted. The king is exalted on high. I will praise him. He is exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise his name.
Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that God, know, know that the Lord is God. He is he, it is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever. And his faith. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Now it's time for us to remember any of the joys and concerns that we may have so that we may all be in prayer for one another. Muriel? Again, I just want to um, celebrate the giving out of 400 meals on Wednesday, and that could not have been done without all of the faithful volunteers that we have. Anybody else? Constance. Thank you, David. Uh, we'd like to praise God. We got to see our grandchildren and sons and uh, had a wonderful feast with our family. And I'd like to ask prayers for Ron again. You can tell we're getting older. We have a lot of health issues. Uh, Ron has to travel to Akron, Ohio on any others? Did anybody have um, a meal this past week with, that's a you know, big undertaking, um, but also cause for fellowship and a lot of people around the table? I know I did. Anybody else? I have a joy, uh, Pastor Ben. I have a joy that I was able to be with my family, my, my little small family. It's just the three of us. So uh, and they live in California, so it was great to be with them on my vacation and have a wonderful, wonderful addition to that. It's a blessing to know that I could go away and Pastor Ben was here to take care of everything. So what a blessing that is. It, it was a team. It wasn't just me. It was teamwork makes the dream work. So, <laughs> Muriel. Just another quick joy to um, announce. It's uh, Chris Lochran's birthday. Oh. Should we make her sing, play for herself? <laughs> All right. Happy birthday to Chris. Happy birthday to you. Anybody else? No? If not, let us uh, go to the Lord in prayer. We, we have one day that we, we call Thanksgiving, but it's, a, it's something that you call us to do every day of the year. Every day we give thanks to you. You allow the, the sun to shine and the sky to wake us up to, to go about our day. You give us people to celebrate when it is time to celebrate and mourn when it is time to mourn. You give us um, comfort. You give us strength, you give us endurance, you give us whatever we need to face whatever it is that will come into our lives, into our way. You give us yourself. That is a mystery that we can only sit in awe to uh, even begin to fathom. Just help us to remember, help us to be able to give thanks to you every moment of our being. Help us to live a life that shows the world that we know who you are and we know who we are because of you. 
just fill our hearts, fill our hearts with the love that your son told us to to have regarding every single person we meet. Every single person is a neighbor that we are called to love as we love ourselves. Help us to have the perfect love for you. Help us have a love for ourselves because we cannot love one another. We cannot love you if we do not also love ourselves. Just show us all that you do and all who you are so that we may proclaim in, in the world that our Father is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our, trespass, our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. He is so awesome. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I, I know you may still be full from the holidays, but let's see if we can come out of our slump from the holidays and uh, and worship God a little bit. Anybody uh, feel good about being a follower of Christ? Anybody in the house feel good? It's a portion to show how much we love the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we receive that offering this week, we do so with open hearts and open minds, and we do so with the knowledge that you are blessing that money. We believe that as it comes in, that you will increase it a hundredfold. We just know that through you, we can give a little and you can make it into a lot. That is the goodness of God. And we thank you for all that you've done, what you're doing. Give him a little thank you, okay? Let's sing our favorite song. <laughs> Just wanna thank you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings, blessings and glory and honor. Yeah, just wanna thank you. Let's give them a praise. Let's give God a praise as they come forward. Oh, it's that tricky Sunday when you don't go straight back. All right. So in a little bit, they're going to talk about sheep and goats. We're going to talk about sheep, too, because that's what we've been talking about. Tell the difference between a sheep and a goat. I see a goat, and I see a horse. Okay. No. Only goats have Well, it depends on the sheep. There are sheep that have horns. All right, so I got pictures. And they're tiny. So I'm going to blow them up so we can see them. And you're going to tell me if you think it's a sheep or a goat. Oh, hold on. All right. 
So what do you think that is? You think the first one's a sheep? What do you think, Sage? Yeah, yeah sheep? We agree? You are correct. Oh, and this one's okay. a sheep. That is correct. Is that one A? A sheep. What about this one? That's a sheep. Oh, that's a goat. How about that one? Well, that's a weird looking one, huh? What do you think? You think a sheep? Yeah. It's a sheep. How about this guy? A sheep. It's a goat. <laughs> you guys did all right, not too bad. All right, so that wasn't as easy as we thought it would be, right? We thought it would be a lot easier just to like look goats or not. <clears throat> Do you think Jesus can tell the difference between a sheep and a goat? Do you think Jesus could? I think Jesus could. Jesus knows everything, right? Our Bible tells us that one day Jesus was speaking to a bunch of his followers. And he said, you know what? One of these days, we're going to have to decide if you're a sheep or if you're a goat. That's weird, right? But as he was speaking to them, they're like, what are you talking about? And he said, one day I'll sit on my throne and all of get up here, and you were naked and you gave me clothes and you were sick and you cared for me. Sit and stay. Right here. Thank you. And he said those on, and they said, well, when did we do that? When did we give you food? When did we give you water if you were thirsty? When did these things happen? And they said, when you did this to the least of the people, you did it for me. So if I did it for somebody else, you were doing it for Jesus. And then he said, but on the left hand are the people who didn't give me food and didn't give me drink and didn't help me whenever I needed it. And they said, but when did we not help you, Jesus? You're Jesus. Of course we're going to help you. And they said, it's not when you help me. It's when you don't help the people around you that need your help. So Jesus said that the sheep are the people who help other people. So we, if we want to be Jesus' sheep, have to help other people. We have to show everybody kindness and love. And if we don't, then we'll be the goats. And that means we're the people that didn't help other people. And Jesus will be sad. So we want Jesus to pick us as sheep, right? Because he's our shepherd, right? If, if he doesn't pick us as our sheep, then we'll be sad too. What? I love my mom and dad. That's very great that you help them. Oh, okay. All right, let's pray. Our Father, help us to show love to others as you show love for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, go back. Amen. Let's give God another praise. Those are some, some very fiery and excited young men. Amen. Boys are special, aren't they? And uh, sometimes they don't always do what we want. But guess what? I know some grown folks who won't do what we want. What do you think about that? Amen. 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 We appreciate that. Now we're ready for our reflection.
We know tis Lord Jesus, the gift of your grace. We see in the crowd of the suffering your face. Lord, when did we see you? Your teaching is clear that when we serve others, we're serving you here. And when your church heeds you and helps those in pain, then out of the chaos hope rises again. Amen. Casey has such a beautiful voice. I said, Casey has such a beautiful voice. Amen. And uh, Casey, I know they heard me, but they're a little shy this morning. And uh, uh, I know she shares her voice with other churches in the area. And I, I got some connections, some deep connect. And I'm praying for you to be with us every Sunday. All oh, somebody say amen. amen. Hey, I'm going to pray that thing through. Come on now, somebody. Well, we're so glad that she's a part. She belongs to Otterbein. And Liz has a beautiful voice. She belongs to Otterbein. And Chris has a beautiful voice, and she's a great musician. She belongs to Audubon. How did you like that praise team? Amen. All right. So we're trying to grow into who we will be and give God all our praise the, the way we know how, and we're looking forward to what God and how God will continue to use us in this church. It's such a wonderful journey. And I pray that you will take it with me. Amen. Let us get ready for our, what the Lord has for us this morning. And it's in Matthew 25, 31 to 46. Amanda did such a wonderful job with our message. I don't know if I should preach this morning, but we'll try. Let us stand to our feet for the reading of God's word. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for the one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed into the internal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. That is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Be to God. You may be seated. Going to speak to you for just a few minutes on the subject of serving one another. 
serving one another. Here at Audubon, we know the meaning of serving one another. The nonprofit Feeding the Spirit uses this location to serve meals every Thursday. And I'm meeting with their director, Deb, next month to see how Audubon can work even more closely with Feeding the Spirit. Yes, Audubon understands the meaning of serving one another. This past week, we served meals here for Thanksgiving, so, so many appreciated the food, and the thought was also that they needed a place to go and eat and, and fellowship. So we'll be looking into that next year. All Muriel said, come on now. We'll be looking to have sit-down fellowship next year. Oh, we'll, we're going to try to make it happen. Somebody say amen. amen. All throughout God's world, we are reminded, all throughout God's word, we are reminded of the importance of living not for self, but for the glory of God and the good of others. Both the Old Testament and the New Testament are filled with one another statements that both teach us the importance and instructions of how to effectively do life with one another. If there was ever a time in our world where we needed to be reminded of this message, it is today. We live in a me-first society. The voices of the culture and the agenda begin. It continually feed our fleshly nature to look out for self first. As a result, it is easy to be selfish, to be proud, to be arrogant. And this leads to a constant climate of destruction and division. We see this throughout our world and our country in alarming ways. However, as believers in Christ, while we live in this world, we are not to be of this world. Oh, somebody ought to say amen. amen. John 15, 19 tells us that also Romans 12 and 2 ex exhorts this, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove that what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. We are definitely impacted by living in this world, but we should not be influenced by it. For as living as Christians, this world is not our home. So as we live in this temporary dwelling, we are called to live in light of our heavenly home. We are to live for and like Jesus as we walk through this fallen world. We must strive to live our lives for the glory of God and the good of others. As we focus on serving one another, love and service go hand in hand. You can't describe true love without acts of service. We see this throughout the Bible, and especially from the example of Jesus. In John 13, 34 to 35, Jesus says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. How can you love God and you don't love one another, in other words? That's what it's saying. In case it's not clear to you, if you claim you love God, but you don't love one another, oh, God's going to have a problem with that. Amen. This is all we need to do. However, we must remember in this passage how, dem how Jesus did demonstrate this love. In John 13, 5 and 20, we see Jesus bowed low as a servant with a towel around his waist as he washes the filthy feet of his disciples. He then announces, if I then, the Lord and teacher, wash your feet, you also need to wash one another's feet. For I gave you an example that you should also do as I did to you. His love was demonstrated through service. We see the same in his sacrifice. John 3, 16 says that, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Clearly, God loved all humankind, and he demonstrated that love. He didn't wait for you to get it and to get on point and to get with the program. Oh, just think if he had waited for us to get with the program. We would still be waiting for God to go. Oh, you know what I'm saying. He didn't wait for you to get the point, get with the program. He gave his life for us in hopes that we would get it then. And we're still trying to get it, amen? Amen. As I have already stated, most of us here at Audubon understand the importance of serving others. 
And as well, we know there are many good and noble community organizations that raise and give a lot of money and take great efforts to help others. This is commendable. But as a believer, we don't need to be told by a secular organization that we should serve. God has already given his instruction in his word. Galatians 5.13 explains, For you were called to freedom, brethren, only do not, and sisters, only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. In other words, as a follower of Jesus, I have been sent to set free from sin in my own way of living, to live as a new creature in Christ. So with this freedom in Christ, I discover true joy, true joy, as I humble myself and serve others. 1 Peter 4, 8 to 10 says, Above all, keep fervent in your love for one another, because love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaint. As each one has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. One of the ways to keep growing in our love for each other is to use our gifts and abilities to serve and build each other up. God instructs us to serve the Lord with gladness. That was songs. We heard that today. Sue read that, Songs 100. Serve the Lord with gladness. Anybody hear me this morning? Serve the Lord with gladness. Woo! Serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Amen. That's why I ask you to shout and make noise. We're asked all the time in the Bible to serve the Lord and make some noise. Hey, man, serve the Lord with gladness. We can't serve the Lord with gladness like this. <laughs> hey, man, we've got to open up and let the Lord shine through us and let the world know who we belong to. Serving the Lord demonstrates our gladness and who God is our gratitude for what God has done, and our goal of glorifying God in all that we do. Everything we do, we should think about glorifying God. Hallelujah. We should think about glorifying God. Oh, asking, praying that prayer, Lord, what can I do for you today? How can I serve you better today? Jesus himself modeled this for us and said of himself in Mark 10, 45, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life of ransom for many. In other words, serving is one of the chief characteristics of Jesus. Doesn't that beg a question? How can someone claim to be a Christian and not have a conviction to serve? Oh, come on, somebody. Don't get that quiet on me. I'm, if we get that quiet, I'm thinking, oh, they're getting kind of scared. It's, this word might be touching them a little bit. Amen. How can you be a Christian and not have a conviction to serve? That is a contradiction. To be a Christian means that you have placed your faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and ruler of your life. Since I was 16, I have prayed the prayer, Lord, use me in your service. I prayed that so many times, of course, I had no clue I would end up here. Oh, come on. I had no clue. But I prayed that prayer constantly. Lord, use me in your service. Show me what to do, how to do, and where to do. And I got to a point where, you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty good talker. You kind of probably figured that out, right? And so uh, I got to the point where I even let, let the Lord shut my mouth sometimes. I can be in meetings and be places, and the Lord said, just be quiet. Mm, and that's, that's harder than speaking, amen? <laughs> but when you're letting God use you, you're obedient to God's will. And sometimes in quietness brings forth the best opportunities. Since I was 16, I prayed the prayer, Lord, use me in your service. Didn't know what I was praying, didn't know what that meant, didn't understand the outcome, but what I was really saying was, Lord, I belong to you. Use me. Lord, I'm walking with you. Use me. Lord, I'm loving you. I want to be like you. Lord, I want to do what you would have me to do. Lord, I would say, if you're not there, I don't want to be there. If you're not in it, I don't want to be in it. 
Hmm. When we all have decided to follow Christ, we all decided to let Christ into our hearts, and we literally became followers of the most gracious and sacrificial servant that the world has ever seen. Yet, if there's no desire or willingness to serve in your life, something is off. Your practice contradicts what you profess. This is what Jesus was dealing with in this text. Many can say they love Jesus, but what do their actions say? Jesus didn't evaluate them on the basis of their claim, but on the evidence of their conduct. Like our Bible study of James, faith without works is dead. If you really have faith and believe in God, we ought to see it somewhere, somehow, sometime. Oh, there you go. You're getting into it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Jesus shows us in this text that the evidence of genuine faith is good works. He shows us that the righteous ones are those who believe in him as Lord and demonstrate his lordship through faithful service. Here in our scripture text this morning, Jesus says nothing of spiritual gifts, unique abilities, or incredible opportunities. Instead, he focuses on the most basic ways of showing kindness, compassion, and service to others. Much like Jesus' example of washing the disciples' feet and then calling them to do the same, these actions represent the most basic and simple ways that we can serve others. But our actions aren't limited to these. Jesus' points out, point is simply that anyone can serve and do something to minister to others. It's easy for us to get into the mentality that serving others is for some special class, the, the spiritual elite, the gifted, uh, uh, the gifted folks. It's easy to think that, you know, uh, uh, that's a special gift Muriel has. That's why she does that. I, I don't have that gift. Oh, come on, I'm going to mess with you now. I, 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 it's easy to think that that's for somebody else. Well, some folks may say, well, if I could sing like Casey, I would sing in the choir. If I could sing like Liz, if I could play like Chris, uh, I, I, I would sing in the choir. I would be a part of the service. And some folks would say, Debbie and Muriel, they have special organizational skills. If I was like that, like Debbie Arntz and Muriel Robbins, then I would definitely serve. If I were more outgoing, more social, then I would serve. If I was good with children like Linda and Amanda, then I would serve. If I had an outgoing personality like Mary Ann in the back, uh, then I would serve. Oh, we got excuses, don't we? We all, oh, if I was like her, if I was like him, if I could do what he said, if I could pray like her, if I could pray like him, if I could preach. We, we always have a reason why we can't do. Well, guess what? God knows who we are, and God knows what we're capable of doing. Oh, somebody ought to be shouting right now. And, and so when you pray that prayer of God, use me in your service, guess what? God will take what you have. And, and use it. Won't he, Donna? Amen. Amen. It's not about what other folks are doing. It's what would God have you to do. Oh, my siblings, I could go on and on with examples, and I know you're glad I'm not. Amen. But Satan will give you every excuse not to serve the Lord because he knows that as long as he keeps you stagnant, you will not grow. And as long as he keeps you where you are, he will keep you down and keep others bound. I remember a, a, a DJ there made some, made some crosses, didn't you, DJ, and distribute them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we got some talent in this church. Come on, somebody. Now, I can't make, I can't make crosses, but I appreciate her ability to do so. Come on, somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, as long as he keeps you where you are, if you don't move with God, you will not grow. The practice of serving others is not for the special few, but for all of God's children. It's about feeding the hungry, giving water to the thirsty, inviting strangers in, making them feel welcome, giving clothes to those who are naked, visiting those who were sick, go going to those who are in prison. These actions required no special degree 
no special amount of knowledge, no experience, no tenure. Everyone is qualified to participate. Just serve, meet and understand the community in which this church resides. We are here to serve this community. Amen. 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 Oh, my siblings, you may not be able to do some things, but every one of us can do something for the glory of God. And I'm talking to not only those who are sitting here today, but those who are on Facebook Live and YouTube. We need to know that there's something that we can do for God, that we can continually do. Can you offer a water bottle, serve a hot meal, welcome a guest, visit the sick, pray for the, pray for the hurting, give to the need, take clothes to a family, operate a camera, minister to a child, hold a baby, hold a hand, smile, and encourage. I know we can find something to do. Don't let sin, selfishness, and strife keep you from serving one another. God shows us clearly in this passage that what we do for the Lord is never in vain. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 42, if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly, I will tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. To those who serve the Lord, God speaks through Paul in Col Colossians 3, 24, saying, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, it is the Lord Christ whom you serve. God's promises reward to all who obey him and faithfully commit to their work to him. God's word is true and his promises are sure. So you might tell me something and then forget. You know, if you take care of this for me, this is what I'm going to do for you. And then I come back, I said, well, I took care of that. And you said, what you talking about? <laughs> but see, God never forgets. What you do for Christ will last. Amen. So, therefore, my siblings, 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. Oh, I may not recognize you. I may be up here and forget your name, and others may not say thank you, but God sees you. And so only what we do for Christ is important, and that's the thing that will last. So we know that Thanksgiving is over. Did you eat enough? Did you get full? Nobody sent a plate my way. Just... Did you watch enough football? <laughs> We've had our wonderful holiday celebration. We've done everything we wanted to, and some folks just sat back and relaxed and got their rest, and that's all good too. We had a good Thanksgiving, but now what? This is just the beginning. We move on to show others the love that we have been blessed with. Amen. 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 Let us take this particular opportunity for those who have joined our church and have not gotten the right hand of fellowship. Would you come up now? Would you please come up now? The deals are coming. You've not gotten the right hand. Oh, you haven't. Come on up. Come on up. Please, this. This. Anyone else who has not gotten the right hand of fellowship? Oh, Becky, come on up. Isn't this awesome? The, uh, the numbers are, are adding. Come on, somebody. Y'all sitting there so quiet, I'll make some noise for you. The numbers are being added. Hallelujah. S say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And maybe there's someone in the audience that's looking for a church home right now, sitting here. If you need looking for a church home, we invite you to come up now. We invite you to come up now. Oh, praise God. Give God a hand. 
I thought you were already with us. God bless you, Maria. I'm standing over here. Praise God. Okay, we're going to come and shake the hand as we're singing. Um, what a fellowship. Come to, just come give them the handshake. I guess I should stand here and get a picture. <laughs> I know. Yeah, God bless you. Thank you. Isn't it good to know you can lean on the everlasting arms? And what a fellowship we have had this morning. May God bless you and continue to keep you. And uh, we're going, I'm going to do a benediction, but I hope you stay around so we can uh, decorate the tree. Amen. Stand to your feet. <clears throat> Dear God, we thank you for your word this morning about service to one another. We appreciate you teaching us and leading and guiding us and helping us, us to be better as Christians. Now unto him who's able to do more than we could think or ask, according to the power that is at work in us. In Jesus' name we pray, let all the saints say, Amen. God bless you. <laughs>